Hello everybody, so today we're going to do a seascape in acrylics. I just wanted to go through some uh, I've done before. I'll show you in a sec. And so I'm using this photo here, which is of a bit of Cornwall. And I love the blues in there. And I came back inspired to paint seascapes and with the lockdown, I finally had a chance to do that. So what we're going to do today is concentrate on the blues you can see in the sea. So I've got one here, what I did earlier. This is actually in oils, and you can see the variation of blues, if the light stops catching it, and you can see all these variational blues. And what we're going to do is paint with a palette knife, so that frees you up, which is always a good thing, and we're going to try and catch all these different kinds of blues. I'll just go through my oeuvre. Uh, so here we are. This is Land's End. <clears throat> and again, all these beautiful blues. So Land's End's over there. And I managed to do some sketching there with my friend Patty and came back very inspired to try and catch what was going on there. Um, I've got another one here. This is of St Ives. This is uh, looking into the light. I think it was just about to become a lovely sunny day, but this was looking into the light. When you do that at the sea, you get this very uh, good kind of silhouette effect and this very sparkly light so you're looking directly into the light and you can see here this is a different color of sea and I've got all these lovely colors here I'm sure I remember how I made them uh, and again painted with a palette knife just to free myself up and this is the Minac theater managed to spend all day there sketching which was fantastic and you can see the sparkle of the sea. Now, the reason why this seems so sparkly, apart from that it is sparkly, is this darkness here. So when you get the silhouette, you really catch the light. So it's getting the tones right. Um, and so I will crack on doing this uh, palette knife painting. So I have my uh, <clears throat> colours here and my handy dandy uh, set, uh, and this is really good, that keeps the colours going for weeks and weeks and weeks, which is amazing for acrylics. Um, so I've got my basic colours here, so I've got some primary reds and um, yellows here, and then I've got all my blues out. So I've got, this is cobalt blue, that's French, oh sorry, that's Prussian blue, that's something called primary blue, and that's French ultramarine, and that's cerulean, if you can see it, which is a wonderful colour for skies um i've got i'm using all sorts of different makes so i think that is this one that's really in blue is this heavy body which is the kind of acrylic i prefer um so the heavy body cerulean blue which is ideal i've been using all sorts of different kinds uh these i've just discovered are really good this is Winsor & Newton Professional Artist Quality, and the colours are fantastic. I've only got purple. I'll have to save up to buy a new set. Um, and this is something I got from the works, which is a very nice uh, Viridian Green, which is very good for making turquoise. So there's all sorts of different makes out there. There's also this one, Golden. I don't know if people have seen that. Um, and that is seen, I think, as the best quality but expensive because they come from America, but Mr. Lawrence does sell them. Sorry, had it upside down. Um, and I think a lot of you have done uh, the palette knife painting with me before. And the one palette knife I use, you can get all sorts of different kinds, is that little trowel one, if I can find it. It's here somewhere. Here we are, this little trowel one. <clears throat> that is the one, you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Things like this, good for mixing colours, I think. Uh, square ones, which are good for doing lines, if you have to do a line. And I don't know if anybody's been watching Bob Ross. He's got a very nice sort of um, extra trowel-shaped one, which he makes mountains with. Uh, <clears throat> but I always, always, always go back to this particular size. This is a Sea White's T15, uh, which I prefer. Uh, so uh, just to save time, I mixed up some colours that I hope I'm going to use. Um, I haven't got a stay wet palette, unfortunately, but I've got a sort of sky colour. I've got these purples in here uh, because there's sort of purple cloud in the back there. Uh, I've got this deep blue, which is Prussian and purple and French ultramarine. This is cobalt blue and uh, viridian, that nice bright green mixed uh, together and you get this nice turquoise. And then here I wanted to get some warmer greens as the sea comes to warm towards you. It's a kind of warmer colour. So I just uh, added a bit more green in there, emerald green, I think that was. And this is emerald green and yellow ochre. 
so I think those are going to work well and you'll have to bear with me I'm going to paint like the clappers so I don't have to do any editing so I've got my little palette here I hope to god I've mixed up enough color so I'm just going in here and smearing it on now I've got a board here from C whites this is a3 and I don't know if you notice that what I'm doing is I'm picking up the paint on the bottom of my palette knife and then putting it on and um, I did tr experiment with a few different kinds of surface. I generally paint an old bit of backing board from a drawing pad, but I found actually that was too smooth. So I do want the weave of the canvas. So this is a little canvas board from the works. I will go back and do the bits where the clips are in a minute. And then all you need to do with your palette knife when you want to change color is actually wipe it on a kitchen towel, which I do have somewhere. Uh, so I'm just going to go a little bit lighter. So I'm going to mix up some white into the blue I've already mixed. Mix that in. And I'm just going to put some lighter bits in here. And you can see I sketched out my basic shape. The nice thing about seascapes is it's generally pretty much like that. Um, so I'm just going to add some lighter variations over here. You don't want the sky to be all the same colour. And with acrylics it does dry very quickly which I think is a blessing. With oils, I'm always cursing and swearing, actually, that um, it's um, it's dry, uh, it's still wet and I can't add any more colour. So with oil painting, I tend to paint them in phases. If you saw my Let's Paint White like Monet painting, um, I had to let it dry overnight between most of the areas. But generally with landscapes, you want to start at the very back and work forward. So again, I'm just going in here with a slightly different colour blue and smoothing it out like icing a cake um, and then I want a little tiny bit of purple because there's these nice purpley little bits of cloud so I'm going to mix that into the blue that I already had I realize it's far too dark but never mind I'm going to add oh no that's completely wrong so maybe take the purple away to the blue and I'm going to add some little purple clouds in the distance I hope there we go nice purple uh, so I'm just going to look at my reference and I'm going to have this nice purple in the distance there. And while it's still wet, you can blend to some extent. And I want some more over here as well, just to vary. Vary the, uh, the sky a little bit. And then did have this nice kind of um, uh, sort of clouds very far away along the Atlantic or somewhere I suppose. So I'm just going to probably leave it more or less like that. Wipe my brush on my trousers. Never mind I'm just going to smooth that out a bit. There we go. Quite happy with that. And I'll go back and knowing that I mixed this colour with just cerulean, that cerulean blue and white, hopefully I will be able to find that colour again. Sometimes it's with an acrylics it's quite tricky and I remember our Chris always uses the colour pretty much out of the tube, so he can always find it again. Uh, so now I'm going in with my nice deep sea colour, which is this purpley bluey purple. Um, and I just want to start putting that on. Oh, I think that might be a bit dark, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. And see what happens. It's on too light. But uh, can you see, so I'm using the bottom of the palette knife to squash all the colour around. And grab those uh, those different colors so I'm just going to go in now I just want to see what it looks like really so I'm just going to put a bit on and see if that's working for me more or less and then I want to actually soften this edge the horizon I think uh, being very far away is a little bit softer so I'm just going to take a little bit of that away and make a lighter version of it so I can get a softer horizon so here we are, and again going in there, and of course with the acrylics it will be dry in a flash and I can go back and add more, take away more. So I'm just going to scrape that on and hope I get a straight line. Um, get the lighter version here. I might go back and wait for that to dry in fact. <clears throat> But you can get quite a good effect quite quickly with acrylics. In fact, that horizon needs to be a little bit higher. I'm just going to mix up some more colour here. 
and go in here, squashing it on. Oops. So by scraping it away while it's still wet, I can actually expose the weave of the canvas, which is something I don't necessarily want. But I want to get that horizon right because that is one of the main things about a seascape. So I'm just going to go up here. Hang on. I'm running out of paint already. You use up a lot of paint I found using acrylics and then I found even more when doing palette knife painting. So I need to bring that horizon up and I need to have it straight. So I'm just going along there. And when you're doing a straight line like that, uh, it's quite useful to look where you're going. Um, I think I have mentioned this before, so uh, don't get scared about looking here. It's like driving, so you're not looking at the road directly beneath the car. You're looking at where you're going to end up. And I think I might be reduced to getting a brush out to smooth that out a bit. So there we are. There we got the horizon looking a bit choppy. I'm just going to go in. Ooh, I'm wiggling away like mad, mainly because the paint's wet. Whoa! Excuse me, I'm going to have to correct that, but I might leave it. I'm just going to smooth the surface because when I come back to correct it, I want the surface to be reasonably smooth. The thing about palette knife with acrylics is that sometimes you end up with a very lumpy surface. So you'll have to forgive my horizon line. I'll go back and do that again. <clears throat> so here I'm back into my dark colour and I'm looking. There's a great swathe of lovely dark colour there. I'm going to have to mix up some more paint. I'm going to have a big glob. This is Prussian blue. It's got that lovely darkness to it, which I might just keep going with. And then add some purples in a minute. So I'm just going smooth. And I'm trying to take the, uh, the marks I make to be on that horizon. I mean, sorry, to be horizontal so the sea doesn't go uphill. I've been enjoying watching Bob Ross a lot recently and he's so good about his comments. Um, I think I saw one recently where he was trying not to make the water go uphill and he's of the same opinion as me. Now I'm taking that colour I had and mixing this very powerful purple in there to add some more detail in here and vary the colour. I'm going in there, I'm going in here. And if you paint really quickly, the paint will blend. Let's see what happens over time, though. By the time I get down to the bottom, I will probably find that most of the paint is uh, dry at the top, so I can add some more details there. So I'm just going in here. I'm just making sure I'm recording. Yes, that is recording. I don't want to do this without recording. So I've got this lovely darkness here. And then what's happening is some of that water is reflecting light over there. Ooh, that's a lovely purple. Right. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to clean my brush or my drawers and I'm going to find a slightly lighter version of that. So I'm going to take this uh, lighter purple I've got here, mix it with some of that colour. and We're getting a nice cool light. So the light is just catching those waves over here. So I'm going for a lighter version of that colour over here. And I'm going to go backwards and forwards, imitating the waves, I hope. And then I'm coming down, I want to fill that bit in. I'm coming down towards a, the more greener this lovely turquoise green you get in Cornwall. And I think it's because Cornwall's covered in cliffs because you're often up high looking down upon the sea. And I think that's what makes it so appealing. Thinking about the New Lynn artists um, that were there, Laura Knight and Harold Knight, her husband, and they just love the light there. And having gone there myself recently, I could see why. So apart from the horizon, we're going all right. I will have to go back and correct that in a minute. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit, just taking the palette knife lightly over the surface. So now I'm coming down to sort of this area and we're getting this nice green within there. So I've got this colour, which might be a bit livid, but let's have a, give it a go. 
Um, <clears throat> and you're getting this green mixing in with that lovely blue. So it's over here. And I realise, even though I mixed up a lot of paint, I didn't mix up enough. So it's going backwards and forwards over there with this green that's going into the blue. So I'm just going to pick up some ordinary, just plain cobalt blue here. And I'm going to use a little bit there to go in here to vary it a bit again as we're coming down to that lovely green. So here it is over here, that very, very dark green. And I'm painting on white, if you notice. I thought the white would give a little bit more sparkle. Coming in here, and then it's starting to get lighter and lighter. So I'm going to pick up this colour, which seems rather fiendish. So I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. So you can go in there with that colour. And while it's wet, you can see you can actually create almost waves within there. So I need to go in with this darker colour here. I'm just going to scrape it on just so I can block in most of it. Actually, these prints are doing pretty well. I'm going to, uh, at staying wet, and I am painting very fast, so I'm just going to spray it because I haven't got a stay wet palette just to keep them active. Uh, but in these little wells in this thing, uh, they will stay uh, active for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. But as soon as you start spreading them out, you're letting more air get at them. So they start to um, dry out. So I'm just a bit worried that this is starting to dry out. I'm going to go in there, that in cobalt blue over here. So just pure cobalt blue, putting it on there, but luckily the paint's still wet, so it is blending in. catching those lovely colours and it's almost like being there. So again I'm just mixing up a slightly lighter version of this rather fiendish colour to put some in here to indicate where the waves are. Looking at that, uh, my reference and seeing how the colour changes. And I want to create these little kind of wave shapes. And again, I can pretty much do this because it's still wet, but once it's dry, um, you'll find that uh, you're just putting on discrete packets of colour. But always with Seascapes, try and get your arm to go like that. I'm just going to pick up a bit of Ultramarine, which is a slightly different colour. Uh, it's this very deep, almost purpley blue. And I'm just going to go in here. Whoa, look at that, crumbs. Getting some of that there. Oh yeah, that's working. And you find a painting will lead you where it wants to go, really. By doing, you will experiment. It's no good thinking, I'm going to paint like this all the time. You want to be able to actually judge what you've actually applied. And this is why I like palette knife painting. Uh, that you lose control, which is always a good thing, and accidents happen. So uh, quite a good thing to do is not to fiddle with it too much. So when you've found something nice, Stick with it. So over here, I've got this slightly lighter area of the sea that I'm just going to try and indicate. And it's just starting to dry now. It's still a little bit wet. Um, and I think I need to spread that out a bit. So I'm just looking at this, this little bit of light that's been caught by a wave that's making the blue seem slightly different. And, and then I want some of that green, or this wonderful turquoise to go in here, I think. Nice deep green to mix in with that. Going sideways, and I think I want a little bit more action going on up here as well. This has got rather flat, so I'm just going to make a variation of that colour with a little bit of white and anything else that's lying around, really. So over here... I'm getting those lighter areas. I don't want everything to be completely flat. Oh, I just love blue. It's my favourite colour. Um, and it's wonderful to paint with. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of that nice dark green in here and start making little wave shapes. I don't like that one. 
so I'm just going to go in there and again making little wave shapes and then I'm coming down here I've got some rocks which I'll probably leave till the end and so I'm going to pick up this lighter version of this colour which I've now made darker and I'm just going to start going in here and you can see here you can just see these uh, I suppose Atlantic rulers is it St. Ives? is that on the Atlantic? Um, graduating that colour up Ooh, hey that's quite effective isn't it it's all about choosing your colours what I found I had to search through all my acrylics and goodness knows I've got a lot of them um, and trying out the colours I have um, and so I'm doing a stock take and finding out what blues I have available to me um, and finding out how they react really I found the cheap ones they go in an absolute flash um, and you use a lot of them if you can get reasonably expensive ones well uh, good quality I think the, the amount of pigment that's in there you get much better coverage and they will last longer so here I am coming down to this nice where the, the sea is a, uh, seems a bit warmer with this very greeny green and just smearing it on and it does help to have all these colours mixed up when you start so you can just grab them when the mood takes you really so I'm going over here and I'm going to need a bit of variation within there and I've just noticed there's some submerged rocks down there so I'm going to have to mix up some slightly darker colours to be those but they are still under the water so I'm just going to take a little bit of that emerald green again just to make it a little bit darker and vary the colour a little bit so over here and here that's blending in and let's have a bit more of that emerald green so this is the emerald green I was using to make up this nice warm colour and then yellow ochre it come out of its little tin and some yellow ochre that's not enough yellow ochre so I'm just mixing that in to make that nice lighter a slightly darker tone because I don't want it all to be exactly the same look that's too uh that's too uh, yeah uh yellow ochre so I'm just going to add some of that green so I want some variations within here and again trying to make those little wave shapes so I just want a variation of tone more than anything so you've got all these waves doing their thing Coming in here. Whoa, I've gone in pasto. And then I think I want to kind of join up those areas. So I'm going to go back to this nice turquoise that I had. And I'm going to go back and add some of that. I think I want to go a little bit more turquoise. Here. And actually, this is quite a good shape for doing. Um, making little waves so I'm going pressing on here and I'm going to add a little bit more white to that green that I had and I'm going to put the foam in I think once it's dry which won't be long I don't think but I suppose it depends on how much paint you've got on here but acrylic will probably dry within half an hour even if it is really thick um, and then I need my darker turquoise so I'm just using this darker turquoise up here so the colours blend together and most of this is still wet so that's a different ball game from painting on dry colours but I think that's working quite well as a uh, as just a sort of ode to the colour of the sea and this one there's a nice wave here I'm just going to take some dark of that dark turquoise and mix it in with my green there because I want to catch that wave doing that and I don't think that's dark enough yet and I'm getting fixated by all the little white bits that I left behind and fiddling don't fiddle uh, <clears throat> so here I'm just going to have some lighter variations of that colour and then I'm just looking over here, there is this great submerged rock there. Um, but I'm just going to add some lighter areas 
down here. And I think I want to go a little bit darker over here. Oh, I'm running out of paint. I might have to make that rock bigger. Oh, I want that. I want that over there. Um, just to catch, there's a wave there. I'm just going to go backwards and forwards. Of course, if you're doing this in your own time, you don't have to paint like the clappers. Um, and you can be a little bit more considered. But I do highly recommend painting quite quickly because that way the paint will blend. Or if you really want to go hardcore, use oils because uh, they are lovely. But again, you have to pace oils. You have to let them dry overnight for certain areas. I, I tend to paint the sky first of various things and then add some more later. And I'm getting nice textures in there, which I wasn't expecting, which I think will work really well with the... Um, uh, with the foam. Uh, right, so I've got something going on here, which is actually quite light, much lighter there. So I've got my uh, O'Donnell colour, I suppose it is, and I'm just going to add some variations within there. And then this is all variations of... <clears throat> Uh, the foam but I do want something underneath it so I'm going to take another palette and then I'm going to try and mix um, some yellow ochre if only I have any left Ooh. some yellow ochre in there with some of my eau de Neal. and then it's quite a lot of white I'm getting through just tons and tons of white um, might be an idea to get uh, one good colour uh, or one good paint, and that will be golden um, uh, white, because I think that will buck up all the other colours that you possess. I was figuring out what's going on here, so there's a nice thing going on there, and add me rocks in a minute. So we're getting there, except that's darker, so I'm just going to pick up some of this darker paint from over here. And then I've got some nice O'Donnell just there. Oops. Yeah. If I have that with a bit of white, that should be pretty much perfect. Right, so I'm now just assessing what I've done. Um, I've, what I'm going to do is actually mix up some good colours for rocks. And I haven't actually got black. I've got my burnt umber and some yellow ochre. I'm going to have to get some more yellow ochre. And that's a little bit... I find the colours uh, vary a lot with acrylics. I find this one, which is a posh one, posh -ish, is a bit too pale. That's not what I consider a burnt umber, but I'm going to add a big old glob of Prussian blue here. And you can see that knocks it back. It makes it slightly less uh, vivid. And I could actually think about putting some rocks in. So again, looking at what's happening here. And actually, I might even take a bit of purple. Because I just know it does the job. Uh, to make that lovely whoa, purple. I think I might need some blue in there as well. So again, I'm going to grab a lump of Prussian blue. Because it's a nice dark colour. I think it's slightly less purple. It's probably a good thing. And I just want to create some darks where my rocks are. And I had some darts under the rocks, didn't I? So I'm just going to grab some, take some of this colour and add some of this colour to it and see if I can get the impression of rocks underneath the waves over here. So I've got some over here and over here. And they've got the water on the top. That's working better. So I'm just going to See if I can bring some of that colour across. You get the idea of rocks and there's all sorts of weird things happening over there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, yellow ochre over there. There's some pale rocks under the sea just here. So I'm just going to put those in. No, that needs more white. I'm going to grab some white. You can just see them over here. 
and then I'm going to add some dark to that. Take some of these darks again from here and adding them on. I need to smush that around and while it's wet you can smush things around. So I'm just going to take a bit of sea colour and smush it on top so it's not quite so prominent but they are there and you do know that they are there. So getting the idea of submerged rocks and as I say the nice thing about painting with a palette knife is not fiddling. We're all for not fiddling. So over here I've got this odd colour here which I thought I'd try out and see if it works for a rock. But I think what I'm going to have to do is attack this in a bomb broth kind of fashion um, and actually just get those big shapes on so I have the darks underneath of these rocks. So this rock, I think the reason why I like this photograph is that it's got this kind of distance over here, hasn't it? So I'm going over here. I'm just putting them in for my own information at the moment. And I'm just going to add a little bit more white to that. Let's see what happens. And a little bit of that to that. If I get a rock colour, oh, I might do. That's good. Could be a rock colour. Make sure your colour's well mixed up. I'll part of that 